Hello, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and today we're going to be talking a little bit more about imperialism. Um, but before we get too deeply into imperialism itself, what I want to establish here is uh, kind of the underlying foundational uh, justification for imperial control um, by the predominantly white Western imperialist countries who had uh, industrialized, and those uh, people of color who were kind of the imperialized people, say, from Asia to South Asia to Southeast Asia to the Middle East and Africa and Latin America and South America and, and the Pacific Islands and all of these places. Um, so what we need to do is we need to start off talking a little bit about the reality of race. So contrary to what many people believe, um, there isn't actually any biological basis for what we think of as race. Um, as it says here, 85% of all variation between humans is found within races, not between them. Uh, so what, what that means is that there's not a race that is naturally smarter or more athletic or musically talented or more hardworking than any other. Um, a lot of those things, athletic ability and you know who's good at math and who belongs in the fields picking vegetables and things like that, a lot of those things are... are racialized in our society, but there's no biological anything to that. Um, this is what the, the overwhelming preponderance of science now says, that, that the humans have very small amount of genetic variation between them, all humans, um, much less so than most other species of any living thing on the planet. Um, and 85% of any variation between humans is found in people of the same race. Uh, so the concept of race as biology has been thoroughly debunked by science. Um, and yet, race remains. Right? So some questions, uh, you can see these on the attached uh, note-taking guide. Um, OK, so if race isn't biology, then what is it? Um, what it is is a social construction. There's, that's a vocabulary term that you can use to describe race, and a social construction means that it was, it was not discovered, like, scientifically by humans. Um, it was created. Um, and that leads then to the next question of why we created race. Um, we created race in order to justify slavery, uh, and later, as we're going to talk about in this presentation, imperialism. Um, if you can remember the Declaration of Independence and Thomas Jefferson, um, if you can think of Thomas Jefferson as an example here, he's the perfect example because Though most people think of him as this great man, founding father of you know, the, the United States and author of the Declaration of Independence and all that kind of stuff, um, in his life and in his works, we can see the greatest um, contradiction um, of, you know, one of the greatest contradictions of all time, in that he wrote this lofty idea of the Enlightenment, all men are created equal and everyone should have an equal chance to um, have life and liberty and to pursue happiness or property, as John Locke said. Um, but Thomas Jefferson also was the owner of a gigantic plantation in Virginia upon which many, many slaves, uh, we're talking hundreds of slaves, worked and lived, and he owned people. So, so how could Thomas Jefferson say that all men are created equal when there were hundreds of people back home that he owned who were clearly not equal? not equal in the law of the state of Virginia or the law of any state. Um, so in order to answer that question, how can we have slavery and slaves and still adhere to this idea of all men are created equal? Um, you know, we can think deeply about that. And you can pause the video here if you want to think a little bit about that, because I'm going to answer that question. Um, the answer to that question is that you have to think that the slaves are subhuman. And that's where racism comes from, that this belief there's something about those dark people that makes them less than the white people, and white is the highest evolution of man. And anyone who is less than white is, is somehow undeserving of the natural resources that are you know, on the land that they inhabit, or they are unable to take care of themselves, so they need white people and white countries to come and make rules for them and govern them, and give them French culture, or give them English culture, or American culture. Uh, watch out for them like they're little, little children, little brown brothers. Anyhow, um, so 
on we go to connect this idea specifically to the uh, motives for imperialism. So we're going to talk about a number of different motives for imperialism. Oh, here's another image of uh, 19th century race science, as we were just talking about science in quotes there, because it's anything but scientific. Um, so when we're talking about the motives for imperialism, we're talking about these six things, E-M-P-I-R-E. -E. So empire is a handy acronym for remembering the six things that are the motives for um, late 1800s, early 1900s imperialism. Um, and really, you can think of these as like capital E and then lowercase m-p-i-r-e, even though it's not the way it's written, because the E for economic was the very, very most important. Um, if you have the, uh, the attached note-taking guide, you'll also want to, other than just copying down this definition, draw a little symbol in the box next to it for economic, um, essentially to make money, to make money by taking what imperialized people had. And again, the underlying current of racism here is that, you know, in order to feel right about taking things from other people for your own personal benefit, you have to believe that, you know, they wouldn't use it. They're subhuman. Another example that might be helpful, you know, along those lines is if you think if you came across a little mouse on the street and that mouse is just sitting there, but that mouse had in its paw a $100 bill. Would you go on about your way or would you take that $100 bill from the mouse? Right? Clearly. The mouse is less than human. The mouse doesn't know what to do with it. The mouse, the mouse can't go and buy mouse food with it. You know, it doesn't have opposable thumbs. It can't stand up at the counter and give money to the clerk. So obviously you can use the hundred dollars, but the mouse can't, right? That would be an example of the kind of racist thinking of, oh, these little brown people, they can't use it. So we're going to take it from them because they're not using it right anyways. Um, whatever it is, like natural resources, is most commonly what we're talking about. And you'll see some of that in the images coming up. Um, M stands for military, so it was important for one imperialist country to be able to stop other imperialist countries from taking things away um, that they wanted, right? So it's kind of like playing defense on your worldwide shopping spree to keep the other imperialist countries from taking things out of your cart. Um, P is for political, essentially the same thing as, as military, um, except that here we're not talking about straight up force, we're talking about manipulating other countries um, by having the strongest empire. So, you know, if you, you control this amount of area, maybe you can, you know, work some kind of trades in, in your favor or kind of play different imperialist countries against each other. So having a large empire was a political asset. So you'll see some images of that in a moment. Um, I stands for ideological, and this is our, our closer connection to that idea of racism. Uh, also called social Darwinism. So taking the ideas of Charles Darwin, evolution from your biology book, and, and applying that to, um, to like levels of industrialization. So the white imperialist countries, they showed up and they said, oh, these, aren't these African people cute? They're still living in houses that are kind of crudely constructed, or they don't have the tools or the factories that we have, so obviously they're less than us, they're less than human, because they don't have factories, or they don't have an advanced military, or they don't have a unified government in the same way that we do. Um, so the quote there, our race is naturally better, so we have a right to take what we want from the dark people. That would be like um, symbolic of the attitude of a white imperialist um, going around the world taking things from imperialized people, people of color. Um, R for religion, and the imperialist countries were all Christian countries, and so it was, since Christianity in their eyes was the only true religion, it was right to force everyone else to be Christian and disregard their religions and their culture and other things. Um, and then the last E is for exploratory, to find out what's out there for the taking, to make maps and draw plans so you can Go and take it from them. Um, now, the activity that follows this has a, a series of images. So the images of imperialism instructions. These instructions are for in-class partner work, but since you're doing this uh, at home or not with a partner, then you can disregard the partner part of the instructions. So you're going to look at each image as it appears. I'll let each image stay on the screen for about five seconds so you can pause the video to take a look at the image for as long as you want. Um, you're going to describe the image in the box that you have in that space provider where it says description. Decide which of the six motives you think is most at work there. It doesn't have to be, you know, only one of them at work, but which one is the kind of the most uh, obvious. Uh, and then in the box for evidence, you're going to kind of point out some details. You know, it doesn't have to be complete sentences. The box is kind of small. Bullet form. 
um, that kind of justify your choice, right? So if you choose, you know, economic or ideological, then why do you think that? So we'll go ahead and do the first one together. The, the first one is this, this uh, classic image here of this guy. His name is Cecil Rhodes, and he was a British guy, and he was uh, very much in favor of imperialism. You can see that he is standing on the continent of Africa with one foot down here in South Africa and the other foot up here in Egypt. And his great vision was then to have everywhere in between be a British colony. And in fact, he's holding this looks like a wire or rope. It's a telegraph line. And he wanted to connect North Africa and South Africa with a telegraph. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of things at work here. Uh, I think the imagery is, is obviously very powerful. This is the the, the white man who is like, he's up in the clouds, almost like godlike, um, where he's, he's standing over this continent of Africa, and you can see the kind of shading here over the continent of Africa. Um, there's some imagery that, that really, I think, is stark in terms of who deserves to be stepped on and who is larger than life. Um, so I would classify this as ideological, but I, by no means is that the only way that you could answer that. This, this question or interpret this image. So um, I'll be quiet now and uh, click through the other nine images, as you can see, uh, about five seconds each. <laughs> 